so when you adjust the valve, you want to get a, uh, it's a, what it is, it's a straight, you have a straight slot screwdriver and then that's the adjustment. And then the nut locks the adjustment. So you have to adjust it on the heel of the cam. This, it, this is on the heel, these are coming up on the toes, these are kind of on the heel. You might be able to adjust all these things. These are all kind of openings. So you can only adjust it when it's on when the valves are closed. You adjust the valves when they're closed. So you want to uh, make sure all these nuts are loose. Back them out a little bit. Not, not this one. I'm not going to adjust that one. The nuts are going to adjust. So we're going to do all these here. We've got to so make sure all those lock nuts are loose. So we're going to adjust it for eight thousandths of an inch. So what you do, and the one you want to adjust, is you put the feeler gauge, in this case, between the cam lobe and that follower, whatever it is. And now it's kind of tight. So what you do, is you're going to back, back this out, and you're going to put the feeler gauge in there. And then you just tighten it until it stops. Should be adjusted. So then the thing's going to be more on the tight side. Your fuel gauge should be kind of just you know, grabbing it. When you got it adjusted, I think there's another adjustment again in this. So when you tight, tighten this intake man for this, you want to go from the inside out. So that's the first one you tighten. And the next one's going to be this one right here, underneath. Then the next bolts are going to tighten it.
take it back here. Put it on that lower bolt. Okay, when setting up these timing marks, a critical thing is this mark on the crank. And on Toyota, you get this. I got we. I went over this earlier, but this is just a little, uh, very small mark here on this on this uh, sprocket, and that lines up to this kind of bump here on the front of the engine. So you got to have that exactly lined up. So you want to. Turn your turn your crank here. To get that lined up right. Over here, wire is nice. Okay, so that's lined up good. Now, hope we can see it. And our top mark is marked up. This is a, this is a 3E engine. So it's got 3E written on the sprockets. That means that hole needs needs to line up with. A hole in the front of the main of the of the cam cap right here. So uh, it looks like it's lined up. So we can put on the the uh, timing belt now. Now, when you install the timing belt, the the critical thing is you don't want to bend the belt, and you want to. Uh, so you're gonna get it around all these sprockets here. And install it now. Now, okay. Now, timing belts can be real difficult to put on if you don't know if you don't use the right procedure. Now, the main thing with this is is your, on your tensioner. You want the tensioner as loose as possible. This is the tensioner pulley. See how the slot here means that it can. It, when you loosen this thing, the spring is going to pull this tensioner against the belt to pull the belt tight. But when installing it, you need this as backed off as far as possible so you can just get the belt on the pulleys. Okay, so that's the first thing. The next thing is you want to have this belt pulled as tight as possible on the side opposite the tensioner. So that's going to be the tensioner is on is on this side. So this side is going to be pulled tight because the engine's turning this way. So the tensioner is actually tensioning the slack side of the belt. So you so you want to so that's the key thing. So okay, so we're a couple things is you don't you can't twist the belt. You can't force it on anything. You don't want to break break it, scuff it, screw it up, or anything like that. Okay. You want it. You want it to go on. Not you know. And you got to push it on gradually. Okay. So it isn't going to go on one sprocket completely, and then the other ones. So it's a little tricky here. You probably want to get it on this oil pump sprocket down there first, and then you got it a little bit on. The Crank down there. Okay, so after it's installed, you got to you want to check to make sure that it's still lined up. So what you do is you want to loosen your uh, tensioner here fully, and that's going to allow the spring tension of the tensioner to pull tension against the belt. Okay. Once you're doing that, you got to retighten that to set the tension, the position of that tensioner. Okay. Now we're gonna now we gotta turn the engine around a couple of times. And make sure that your marks are still good in line there. Okay, so what, what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna rotate it backwards first to get it They're good at this point. So I'm going to turn the engine. So what you want to do is you want to turn the engine two turns manually. 
to make sure that the uh, marks stay lined up. So get up, get up. Exactly. Now we're going to turn the engine around. So get up. bottom mark is good. And then you check to make sure that the top mark is good and the left side is good. So you're, you're, you're done. Check your thing here. cylinders is key, so it only goes in one way. It used to be, if you've got like a you know, V8 American car with a distributor in the back or the front, you've got to get the gears only go together one way, so what I do with that is it's a little bit of a procedure, but with this car you don't have to do it. So the way, this is offset, this keyway, and so you got to look at the beginning of the cam. It looks like the shower or something is that side. So that's going to be like this. See before the key just goes a certain way. So it goes, the shallow side is on that side. So it just so now that you got the distributor cap off, you can kind of turn the rotor around. Where the final 